Hello, Cipu Nation. Welcome to another Cipu Quarta, Cipu Quarta number 26. This is one very special. We're going to have Rob here from Death Angel uh, performing Apes of God with Sepultura. And also, he's going to be part of the QA. He just came into the room right now. In a few minutes, we're going to start our QA. But first of all, we want to thank you for all the messages and support. Please leave your comments here in the comment box on Facebook or YouTube telling us where you guys are from. And of course, send, you, send in your questions to Andreas Kisser that's going to be here and also Rob from Death Angel. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also you can subscribe to the Sepul Quarta page, sepultura.com.br slash Sepul Quarta, sorry, to our Sepul Quarta page. Uh, and you have all the links related to Sepultura and also you can uh, access all our web stores, our Sepul stores worldwide. So uh, I'm going to leave a message here for the Brazilian audience. And also I'm going to put here during our Q&A uh, the QR code for if you want to support Mental Health America. Uh, you can just, uh, I'm going to put the, the QR code here and also I'm going to Add the link in the comment box and also in the description of this video. And after the QA, we're gonna have Sepultura and Rob performing Apes of God from the album Roarback. And right now I'm gonna leave a message for our Brazilian audience and we're gonna come back to the QA. Boa tarde, Sepul Nation. Bem-vindos a mais uma Sepul Quarta de número 26. E Sepul Quarta muito especial, a gente sempre fala isso, mas porque elas são muito especiais mesmo. Hoje nós vamos ter o Rob, do Death Angel, participando aqui do Q&A. E também ele tocou com o Sepultura a música Apes of God, do disco Roarback. Ficou uma versão muito especial, matadora. E se vocês quiserem ter mais informações, acompanhar toda a programação da Sepul Quarta, episódios anteriores, é só acessar sepultura.com.br barra sepulquarta e você tem todos os links, também tem o link da Sepul Store. A gente queria também agradecer ao apoio da JBL Harman, né? a Sepul Quarta tem recebido o apoio da JBL Harman e através dos produtos de primeira linha, né? que eles nos fornecem como as caixas de som, fones, microfones e pedais, eu vou colocar aqui o link, se vocês quiserem ter mais informações aí sobre a JBL, jbl.com.br. E é isso, deixem aqui também nos comentários, hoje é em inglês, né? Mas se quiserem deixar suas perguntas, ter as perguntas em destaque no superchat, podem enviar nos comentários e também, né, deixem as mensagens de onde vocês estão falando. Então agora vamos começar o nosso Q&A. What's happening? Rob, good morning, man. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon. Sorry I, I didn't come on sooner for the test, but I literally just got this thing to work like right it's now. Perfect timing. Perfect Excellent. timing. All right. So good evening, uh, uh, all of you in Europe as well. Uh, can see here from the message people from all over the world. It's fantastic. And I'm um, here in Brazil, Sao Paulo. Uh, dying to go back to the stage touring and uh how are you feeling today in, in america in the well, elections and all that stuff that is going on right now yeah there's some heavy stuff going on right now so um feeling the vibes of all that happening and um you know it's kind of a weird time but we're just making the best of it trying to let out our emotions in music and um you know that's about it i voted did my part and you know at this point Fantastic. we're just gonna see what's we're gonna see what happens um you know at, right after we do this I, i got a band rehearsal today so we're gonna all go uh let let it out with some heavy music and all right get, get all these you know Just let it out through music. You know how it is, my man. So that's that, that great, feels yeah. good. That, you know, that feels good. We're, we're keeping busy and doing the best we can. So I think we're doing all right. How about you? You guys are busy. You guys are doing this stuff. 
Yeah, Sepul Quarta is, is pretty demanding. Uh, we we started doing this in April, uh, and we are doing every week. Now we're doing every every two Wednesdays uh, to give more room, you know, to to prepare things and um, and you know it's it's a, an amazing opportunity for for jamming with a lot of people that uh, will will be very difficult, you know, to do it live. Of course, when we meet in festivals, when we meet at, uh, at the hometown and stuff, we, we get together. We jam before. I, I was a part of that Angel album and playing some leads and stuff, you know. So we, we have this on our DNA, you know, music, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> so uh, right. it's great. It, it keeps us uh, busy. It keeps us alive. Unfortunately, Derek's in Los Angeles, so we cannot really get together, you know, to, to jam. Here in Brazil, there there are a few possibilities of concert, like driving concerts and mm -hmm. uh, some some other uh, places for for concerts that I do in like limited uh, amount of people with tables and stuff, you know. Um, and I, I jammed with Kisser Clan mm -hmm. with my son, you know, a few weeks ago, which was great, you know, to play some covers, you know, jam some stuff. Uh, it's weird to play with an empty audience, you know, because you, yeah. you, you don't feel that the show really develops and, and grows, you know. You know how it, how it is, the first song, mm -hmm. second song, and then at the end, you know, you, you are somewhere else, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, it's yeah. like a very, a very uh, like a therapy uh, almost, you know, like, a, uh, you know, when you go on tour every day, I mean, there's few days that you don't feel like it or you you kind of ill or something, but once you're on stage, you know, everything goes, you know, and, and you are a better person afterwards, you know, so definitely that much. I miss a lot, you know, I miss a lot touring. I miss a lot, you know, seeing friends and, and especially our fans and stuff, but, <clears throat> you know, keep, uh, like you said, you know, keep the high spirits, keep the positivity going and, um, and music and art is that, you know, it's always a challenge, especially in heavy metal. Yeah. And, uh, talking about, I mean, that angel and the Grammy experience. Uh, I, I want to, you to, to remember a little bit how was that? Uh, it was kind of a normal world <laughs> still, you know. And the extension of heavy metal to, to the Grammy, you know, after Megadeth, you know, you guys were nominated and stuff. And how was that for you guys to, to be a part of that uh, whole extravaganza? And congratulations, was, of course. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, my friend. Um, I mean, it was definitely surreal. The, I mean, the whole experience just seemed, we couldn't believe it the whole time it was happening. And might, might I add that that was happening this year that that happened this year. Wow. And it feels like, yeah, it feels, it feels like, like, like a lifetime ago I when know. that was happening. Yeah. Like, you know, we were just at the Grammys not that long ago <laughs> and now what happened to everything? Um, I mean, if anything, we were lucky we got to do it last year because if that would have been happening in the next Grammys, then we probably it's not yeah. going to happen. Like, you know, yeah. it wouldn't have happened live. So we were at least able to be at the Staples Center, you know, um, absorbing all the, you know, for, for whatever it's worth, whether you are into music outside of metal or not, and especially a lot of pop music or whatever, a lot of other things that's going on there, you're still surrounded by a lot of heavy hitting you know, musicians, talent, legends all around. And we were just absorbing every second of it. We just told ourselves that we we're going to take this in a positive light and win or lose. It didn't really matter just because the fact that we were, um, you know, we got the acknowledgement to even be nominated in there and um, just to, to experience the entire thing that you've known since you're a small kid watching it on TV or something, you know, when your parents are watching the Grammys and you just see that and you, you wouldn't think that you're going to be there like in that thing, even being a musician, I just, that wasn't even in, in my radar. So it was just completely uh, amazing. And we, we took it for all it was worth, you know, we took it as a chance to get real nice dressed up and take our ladies out there and just roll like, you know, <laughs> like we were in a, a Cinderella moment, like, and it was fun. It was fun. We not we, the best Cinderella. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, the good part, you know. And sure enough, at midnight, we all turned into pumpkins, and so did the whole world. Um, another thing that was pretty heavy and strange is 
you know, we're like on this total high at, at the moment of go- we're entering the, the Grammys. Like we were in the line walking in and just talking and like going, this is like the most amazing, bizarre thing. And right at that point, everything that uh, you just seen the dark cloud go over everybody and everyone was on their phones. And then they just announced that Kobe Bryant had died in the, in the, wow. in the crash, the helicopter. Cl- and, you know, I mean, Kobe Bryant's a legend of the Los Angeles Lakers. They played in that building. That, yeah. That's their house. And we're walking into, into this place and that news hit in that moment. And I'd have to say that was, you know, <laughs> not wow, cool. I mean, brutal. yeah, it was brutal. The whole thing just went dark and like the whole beginning of the awards turned into like a, a tribute for him. And like everyone was, you know, delivering their opening speeches and crying and like everything got really heavy. So that was weird. Um, but, uh, you know, that added to the unforgettable uh, <laughs> moment of the thing. Yeah, but, uh, but overall, it was cool, you know. We didn't win, but a lot of the a lot of the times the we, the non the the guy that wins that award is that's a weird award in the Grammys the the metal category. It's kind of yeah. like they don't really understand. A, I mean, it's like when Metallica uh, it, uh, had the Injustice for All, and and then they lost to Jethro Tull. Man, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird uh, mixture of band. Yeah. They should create something very special for heavy music. You know why not? I mean, it's they so should. popular. I always say heavy metal is the most popular type of music anywhere. It doesn't really depend on, on radio play or nothing. It's like very faithful fans that uh, it, it pass, you know, through generations, you know, like Absolutely. vinyl and CDs and stuff. And it's very real. It's very true. Sepultura only played like 80 countries in 36 years. I mean, regardless of... Uh, and you guys went everywhere oh as well. You know, it's like, uh, uh, regardless of politics or religion, we had only two times that we couldn't play, like once in Cairo in Egypt and once in Lebanon because of politics and religion mm-hmm. and stuff. Unfortunately, we we didn't play. But that's very rare, you know, to happen. We went very. everywhere and stuff. And, and Matto, it, it, it seems not really to, to have the respect that uh, it deserves, you know? Not, not even... To be honest, not even rock that much anymore. That's the sad. That was the yeah, one sad, yeah. sad thing about it. Like we were definitely the freaks in that whole thing. You know, we're just like rock is just not existent in this whole world anymore. Like I mean, in the in the in the in the world of popular, or, you know, in the Grammys world as, as much. Let's say, you know, even back in the day, there was a lot more rock bands represented. You know, maybe not metal but at least rock yeah, yeah and in this thing like the only thing that happened that was rock was i mean aerosmith gave a performance with uh with run dmc you know they did like they did their uh walk this way kind of th- collaboration and it wasn't even that it wasn't even that impressive <laughs> to be honest i don't know what was happening aerosmith somebody was out of tune something was crazy it didn't it, it didn't sound that good and that was about it after that there was just really no rock i mean our drummer, our drummer Will, was just falling asleep the whole time at the grant. We kept like, "Hey, <laughs> he's just like, all that excitement what is this, stuff man? Hey, it's a, <laughs> there's no rock here, man. Uh, he's just like, I, I'm bored with this thing." But um, yeah. In the end, it was it was fun. You know, it was cool. Of course, man. Yeah, it's like a, a great landmark for not not only for you guys, but for Matto in general. You know, and really, it really gives hope. You know, for all of us. You know, to to have more room and uh and uh respect you know to say the least <laughs> for, for for sure. what we do and for so many years you know we have more than 30 years of a career you know we we dedicate everything uh we study music we practice we rehearse you know we we dedicate everything to do what we do you know and uh um at least you know listen to what we're doing <laughs> yeah know? right exactly he's a lot of sacrifice goes on to do this thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. E- e- even though you love it, but still, you know, people don't realize, people don't realize the amount of sacrifice that you have to give up a lot of things to pursue this, this crazy obsession. Uh, we have a question here. AD, Andreas, I always wonder, do you know any Slovenian words? Yeah, my mom was born in Slovenia. Uh, in 1945, January 1945, at the end of the Second World War, 
when she was four years old, she came down to Brazil to start a new life together with my grandma and grandpa, also from Slovenia. She was born in Maribor, the city of Maribor. But Slovenian is a heck of a, no, it's so difficult. It's a very difficult language. And I like languages, you know, I, I like to, to, to try to, to speak. I speak some Spanish uh, and uh, a little bit of German, but uh, Slovenian, I only know Hvala, which is thank you. Very polite, <laughs> say the least. Thank you for your question, man. Um, so Rob, um, also at the beginning of the year, you guys were touring when this whole craziness uh, started, uh, even in Italy and, and everything, you know. Um, how, how was that, you know? And I know Will went through a very horrible uh, situation with the, the illness and, um, and everything went all right afterwards and stuff, but you guys went through something very uh, difficult times. And, and how was that, you know, to deal with that, with all the confusion of, of information during touring and stuff? And how, how you guys dealt with that? It was very strange. It was, it was very strange. Um, first of all, we were on an amazing tour. By the way, sorry if I'm, if I'm yelling for some reason. No, no, sounds I'm, good. My, my yeah. voice is my voice is not coming out in my headphones. Oh, I I hear you, but but not me. So no, I can't hear myself. So, much. <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> so um yeah, we were touring um with this tour called the Bay Strikes Back. So it was Testament, Exodus, and Death Angel. Um, wow, fantastic! So the whole you know the whole Bay Area scene was there in one tour, and we were we we're having amazing shows. Um, and in the you know. It's strange because like, you know, as you know, when you're on tour, you're kind of in a bubble a little bit with your, your, your touring party and just the stuff going on among your, amongst yourselves, yeah. you're paying attention to the, to the shows, all the press and the, the, the schedule every day. It's very, very busy and things are happening fast. And so we're, you know, in the background hearing about the COVID-19 coming around. I mean, even it was then, we didn't even hear about that coronavirus is the only thing you're hearing. And, yeah, yeah. and a lot of jokes about it, actually. A lot of jokes were flying oh, around or around it. So we weren't understanding the seriousness of what was happening. And then, um, then we had one of our shows in Italy canceled because of it. And, and like you were saying, we rarely have a canceled show for any reason in all these years you don't miss a show. The yeah, show must yeah. the show must go on. Definitely. That's the real thing. That's serious. And yeah. the show goes on. You're, you're, you're sick. You're injured. Every kind of thing happens. You don't know that half the time you're watching a band play and there, there's something happening where it's hard for them to play the show, but they play anyway. And yeah, so we, we do not cancel shows, but that happened all of a sudden. They said, you know, they can't allow gatherings of over a thousand people or something. And because of this show is drawing, you know, over a thousand people every night, it's, it's canceled because of that. So we were, we just couldn't understand. Like, we were like, what? It was weird. That, yeah. It was, it was weird. weird. We just thought they were years, panicking. Yeah. It never, yeah happens. We're, never happens. We just couldn't even understand. We thought it was like, what the hell, man? And then, um, yeah, then one, probably about a, a week later, we were thanking God that they canceled that show when we started to hear like how many people was getting sick and especially, unfortunately, in, in Italy at that time. In the north of Italy, yeah. I think it was in Milan, yeah. right? In Milan. Then. I believe so, yes. And yeah. we were headed we were headed there next. So we were like, oh, thank, thankfully we didn't go there. But we thought then it was maybe just isolated in little, some places like there or something. Like we thought, we didn't know the whole world was going into that. And then, at, then they canceled our last show. So it was the second to last show. We were in um, Brussels, and the next night was supposed to be in, I think, Hanover. Um, and before our show in Brussels, we got the word that tomorrow night's show is canceled. So tonight is the last show. So it was oh, again. Shit. It was a, yeah. It was a bummer because we were planning the final show, whatever. And it's like, oh shit, this is it tonight. Like it must be getting serious. Like that whole thing. Meanwhile, while that was happening, we were getting sick or a bunch of us on this tour, it, it was happening to us. So, you know, and in that moment, still, it was so we didn't even think it was that we just thought it was the normal when you get the flu on yeah. tour, like you get sick Which on happens. tour, but it happens. happens. Yeah. You're going in yeah. and out. It's cold outside. It's hot in the show. You always get very sick common, on tour, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Then when one guy gets sick, then 
multiple people are sick because you're in the bus together and what happens is you get the tour the tour <laughs> sickness yeah, yeah so then the bus, yeah. exactly so that's all th we thought was happening but but we got by the by the we were sick for it was me me and will and uh damien me and will and damien ha were sick badly like we were like having fevers and just like sweating really? like laying into your butt oh yeah like bad wow, fever bro worse man. it was the worst we were like pl we played the last five shows in that condition every wow. night it was one of those yeah we were just like talking to each pumping each other up backstage going oh my no god way. dude my I'm, I'm so dizzy like like me too like i'm like i can't even i'm like dizzy as hell and so um and other people had it too but they just were not having brutal symptoms you know everyone has yeah. different some people has no symptoms at all. Uh, some people are can't. Some people were couldn't taste and smell. That was one of the symptoms that you now know. You know of it now. Yeah. But in that moment, nobody understood any of that. We just thought we were. Some people were getting getting the flu, and some people felt maybe had a cold or something. And um, we might trace it back to one of our bus drivers because one of our drivers, one of the second double driver dudes, one night just started throwing up all over the bus man he threw up wow. everywhere like the cleanup of his sickness the next day was <coughs> horrific he threw oh up in the God. bathroom in his bunk in the hallway like he was spreading the disease exactly exactly <laughs> and shortly thereafter that everyone started to, to get oh, sick man. and but yeah bro i mean th those last five shows i was like in a in a days on stage like i hardly hardly remember how, how was how was the the concerts i mean you guys managed to play and everything they were amazing and when, when i see like video footage and photos of those shows especially the ones like i know how sick we were yeah. i was just like wow you i mean i, I was proud of us because you cannot tell we're we're, we're pummeling through our show like you know just letting that's it what all we out. do man with it's what you do outside stage and then we exactly. go exactly you go and once it starts you start feeling better actually in the yes. middle of it because you're just getting in the music's taking you away but then like after you'd come off stage and then like about an hour later after you adrenaline come down you, you're just feeling worse and worse because it's taking all the energy out of you day by day and i mean i even remember the first the, the first show it happened was in manchester so <clears throat> in in london we had a pretty good night we we partied hard we stayed up late and drank and like so the next day before the show both me and will and damien uh three of us were feeling like wrecked like and i just thought it was like a i just thought it was a brutal hangover to be honest me and will before the show were just going man we're don't you i don't usually feel this hungover these days you know i thought we're pretty <laughs> professional about drinking yeah, yeah. but i i feel like the like the old school where you just want to lay on the couch all day like he's like yeah me too man and then we we said let's just go really hard tonight like on stage like we'll sweat it out and we'll feel good after the show so we like let, let's go really hard and i i recall going extra hard that night like just trying to sweat the the, the hangover out of me and then yeah. we came off stage we're like all right yeah man I feel all right. And then about that was it. Like an hour later, I was in my bunk. I, I was I was in my bunk before Testament was even on stage. I was wow. like, whoa. I like felt dizzy. I couldn't like I'm like, whoa, man. I, I think I was more hungover than I thought. And I just went in my <laughs> bunk and laid down. And when I woke up a couple hours later, bro, I was just in a pool of sweat. I was just sweating and sweating. And then I realized I, I think this is not a hangover, man. And that was the start of like a, a four weeks long, like brutal. And I can imagine like a, a traveling back home and oh my God. which is a long fucking travel for California long. and everything. Oh my long. God. It's a, I mean, this is already a pain, you know, if you're healthy, <laughs> it's like a long oh, trip yeah, exactly. and all airports and all that and stuff. And but when you see the feeling like that, of our with packing like trying to pack all our stuff like you know you got your whole whole f four weeks of your clothes from tour yeah. you're trying to get sort that our gear we're like putting our gear in storage like at the at the storage place we have our european rig and stuff and we're carry like dealing with our guitars like which ones we're going to take back and i i just didn't want to do anything i'm just like oh yeah. <laughs> And then the whole ride home too we we're at that point we realized we had heard everything about it and we're like oh shit we probably had that and then we were worried that we might not be allowed back to the states like they were going to quarantine us at the airport like in the immigration like uh -huh. because they were 
starting to cut off travel. That, that Right then they're cutting travel off, and we were just worried that after all that, we we're going to be stuck, not able to get home, being sick, and after five weeks of tour – Oh and my God. coming through the airport in San Francisco, we were just like, again, me and Will were like really the sickest. Like, and we just kept looking at each other going, do I look sick? And they're like, don't, don't, don't act sick. Like we come yeah. through the situation and we're looking at each other going, there's no way, bro, you look so sick right now. We're like, oh shit. And we just tried to get through it. We got through and then right then we just said, all right, I'll see you soon. And we, you know, we went home and then the next thing, you know, and we didn't see each other for a long time, you know, as it went, Will ends up in the hospital, all this stuff happened. We're like, oh, my God. Did you go to the hospital yeah. as well? But you, you stay uh, uh, at the hospital or, or you stayed just home in quarantine and, and recovered at home? I stayed home in quarantine. Yeah, I, I, I got lucky. Like, um, right where, where Will took a turn for the worst, yeah. I started to get better. Like we we're All like right. you know talking to each other every couple of days trying to check in on each other. We're just texting back and forth. How are you feeling today? Like uh, a little bit better. Like yeah, me too. Then the next day, like my my fever's back up. Me too. We were like the same thing was happening to us every day. Then then that day he was all of a sudden he he texted me from the hospital and he just <clears throat> he goes hey man they had to take me to the hospital. I I think they're gonna put me they're gonna put me out for a couple of days. So. I'll talk to you in a couple of days. I'm like, put you out for a couple of days. <laughs> Next thing he, he, they put him into that like induced coma and yeah. he was like that for what? Three weeks or a, almost a whole oh, yeah, month. I, re like I remember that. it was really, uh, yeah, I mean, really weird, you know, to, <clears throat> to follow that day by day and say, what the fuck, man? It's really, hell hard. yeah. Bro. I thought I was next because the same city we're parallel you know so when he went into the hospital really bad that day too my fever was really high and i shit i was like my god uh, this is the next thing that's gonna happen is i'm gonna go to the hospital because will's now in the hospital and just somehow i did it like i just stayed the same and then it started to slowly go and away. damien damien as well was was not as as, as serious as, as will right no i mean he he was he, but he was the same kind of But he also did there the same as me. Like we we're in now in Mexico. He lives in Mexico City. Ah, right. Of all things. So he's out he's out there and yeah, I was talking to him and he, he got better too in, in time. So yeah, you know, it's just unfortunately Will had to had to take it for the team in the real, real experience there but th thankfully you know he's he's the beast man I, I, the yeah beast man i can imagine rise, rise I, can, it. <laughs> i mean it's hard for any musician to go on stage uh, when you're sick and stuff but for a drummer man you know especially the My style God. of music we do it's 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 insane you know the the way he insane he really hold, held up everything and very professional and stuff and um uh, And like I said, I mean, it was happening. The, the type of information was nothing was sure, right? It was really difficult to to make any judgment or any decision, you know? Exactly. It was so crazy. weird. Really crazy. Really a strange. It's been a strange year. <laughs> wow, to say the least. <laughs> least. Like all this stuff going on, but you know. Again, you just, you, you just look for the silver lining. You just try to like make the best of it. You just try to understand yeah. that things are ch change is being forced upon upon yeah. the world. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, so so we But just you know, uh, th that's what I say. I mean, uh, people wants to uh, oh, when the normal comes coming back and stuff. But I say, us as an artist, we always avoiding the normal <laughs> you know always <laughs> yeah. trying to do something different you know trying to create some new possibilities and stuff and uh that's what we do you know so uh i mean uh, art is is the answer <laughs> you know for a better world you know for Absolutely. for communication for unity you see how uh, how heavy metal is so uh huge around the world that makes people connected i mean uh Like I said, we are talking here with people from all over the world and uh, yes. we're all going through this at the same time, which is something unique as well, you know, never happened before. 
Totally. And, um, I'm really glad that you all came out stronger, you know, after this. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, it's, um, it's something that uh, hopefully 2021 will be a better year, you know, that we can manage to go back on tour and to jam and to go back to festivals and stuff. And uh, that's what we're doing, at least, you know, reorganizing everything for next year. And let's see what happens, you know. Yeah. Uh, of course, it doesn't depend on us, on managers or labels or booking agent. Unfortunately, we depend on politicians and all and laws and all that crap, you know. But uh, exactly. Let's see, let's see what happens. Will Will and, there even Will there even be places to play? That's the I other, know. Other, yeah. Other thing, you know. So really shaking it up. But of course, eventually there will. You know, it's some kind of rebirth will occur, but the thing is not going to go. The music, the the fans, the musicians, it's not going to go away. So yeah. it's, they're going to yeah. find a way. A, a way, there's an evolution of it will happen, but there will be shows, there will be live music. It's got to be happening. It's just a matter Definitely. of when. We have a question here, Stan Ribeiro. Uh, <clears throat> I saw that angel in 2010 in Sao Paulo. Good memories. Are there any possibility to see DA doing South American tour in near future? Well, <laughs> first off, I, I agree. Good memories for sure. That was amazing. Uh, very rare that we can tour in South America at all. Um, so it's a very, um, you know, unique experience for us. It's very exciting. And will we tour South America in the future? In the future? Yes. The near future, <laughs> that depends on the world. But um, as soon as we can, definitely, you know, hopefully with the, maybe maybe with another cool band like, you know, Sepultura or something. Yeah. I mean, we did a tour <laughs> in uh, Australia in New Zealand. That was amazing touring, man. Amazing. It was so much fun. And I love that part of the world. You know, it's really nice places and great metal heads and stuff. And and we, we do a, a great package together on stage and off stage, which is most important, you know. Agreed. We don't hate each other, quite the contrary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love and respect each other. And uh, it's so much fun, you know, to to tour to with you guys. And uh, and hopefully, yeah, South America will be amazing. You know, we'll amazing. be fantastic, you know, to do something together. And um, And like I said, you know, it doesn't depend only on us. As soon as we have possibilities to, to do that, that that that's a plan for sure. It'll be great. South America or, or Europe, those are the two. We we yeah. did we did yeah. the Australian New Zealand thing and we did North America in what 2012, America. Or 2012 yeah. I think with a yeah. Frisian and Havoc. <clears throat> that was great. That was, that was great. great. So yeah, hopefully in the future. Joaquin Sahagan. Uh, right on guys. You folks working on a new material? Grateful for the both of you and your musical dedication to our genre. Thank you very much, man. So uh, you guys just released uh, a new, not new, new material, but like cover versions, right? How that came we about? Did. And if you are, you said you're going to practice today and stuff, if you are working on something new. Yes. Um, first of all, hey, what's up, Joaquin? I know that guy. <laughs> all right. Cool, cool cat. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, we... We are working on new material, actually. We got some new stuff that we we were focusing on, but now we had to kind of put that on the shelf for a second because now we're focusing on rehearsing for our, our Christmas shows. So, um, oh yeah, that's right. I just saw. Yeah, we're Great. we're gonna we're gonna attempt the old. Um, we're gonna try tr not the old, but the new the new way of doing a show. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's our first time, but we want to play. We want to do something. Yes. We want to do a show. Of course. And we've been doing this, this is the seventh year of this tradition with our Christmas shows in San Francisco. And we were, you know, really sad that we were going to have to skip it now because of all this. And so we found a way to make it happen. So we're going to do, you know, two nights. We're going to play in San at this club in San Francisco and cameras rolling and try to do one of these virtual concerts. It should be fun. It's definitely a lot of work in a weird, different, strange way. So we're yeah. working on that. <laughs> And we're going to play to nobody in the place. So that's going to, like you said before, the weird, the energy exchange is not yeah. there. Um, yeah. Honestly, I wasn't really into doing this kind of thing because of that, because the energy is going to be not there. And I don't know how we're going to try to rock a show to nobody, 
but we'll pull it off. We'll, we'll, we'll get in the headspace, oh, yeah, really imagine and have a good time and just be excited that our whole band is there with our crew and we're doing a, on stage and doing a show. So that, but, um, so then we'll, after that, we'll continue to get back to writing and working on this new material. Um, and we did just recently, like you brought up, release something of somewhat new material. There's um, a four song EP. It's called Under Pressure. And because we covered Queen and David Bowie's song Under Pressure. A lot and of balls, then- man. <laughs> I know, bro. <laughs> oh, I love the no, song. No, that's a, that's a, that's a song. Song. That's, that's, that's so, you know, it's so classic that uh, it, it's, it's like covering Black Sabbath or something, you know. It's a lot, it's very big responsibility, but it came out fantastic, man. It's amazing. Thanks, man. I mean, I figure, you know, it's the kind of thing we just show a different side of stuff we love love to play and listen to and marcos and again is a, a along fantastic with. singer man he can do anything you know absolutely i knew i knew that that i knew it i could hear it in my mind and i said hey bro like i remember when i took i had the idea and i saw so i just because i because i love the song the words especially in this what's happening right now of course right so it's very timely there it is there all right great cover um, too thank you so yeah you know the world is under pressure, and we bring people here and now, and you know whatever. But it's all acoustic, so it's really stripped down. It's to get vocals, and we did under pressure, and we wrote a new song for that for for that EP. Right. Faded remains is a, a new composition, um, and then we. A song, A Room with a View, which is from a old album. Alô? <coughs> Bruno, ele caiu? Isso, acho que ele caiu. Esperar para ele voltar um pouquinho aí. Eu posso... Falar um Fala pouco da sepultura, da... então. Beleza. Então, primeiro aqui vou deixar um recado para o público do Brasil. A gente vou colocar aqui o link para vocês, enquanto o Rob volta aqui para o nosso Q&A, falando da Sepulstore. Então, vou colocar aqui o endereço. Vocês podem acessar sepultura.com ponto br barra sepul quarta e tem lá os links direcionados para a sepul store a sepul store também tem o seu endereço próprio então só vocês acessarem sepulstore.com.br que vocês vão ter também os links né para para poder conferir todos os produtos aí a loja oficial do sepultura no Brasil vou colocar aqui um dos produtos que foi muito pedido, né, e que é o moletom aqui do Sepultura. Vou colocar aqui para vocês. Então, so for our audience outside Brazil, you just go to sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta and you have all the links related to Sepultura and also to our Sepul stores worldwide. So this is one of the products that we have there. In Brazil, also in Europe and on North America, you have all the links on sepultura.com.br. And on sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta, you also have all the links to the previous sepulquartas and uh, and the whole schedule for the day. Rob is back. We're going to continue the Q&A here. So sepultura.com.br we have all the links related to Sepultura and we're gonna come back for Q&A with Rob all right are we back <clears throat> so send your questions to Rob um, we're gonna select here whichever we can uh, Rob, are you there? Can you hear me? 
I can't see you. Um, no. Maybe yeah, I might have some problems with the uh, with the connection there. Uh, it's not only in Brazil that we have this type of stuff. <laughs> this type of <laughs> problems. True. Doesn't it matter how always. how technological the country is. Always something like that happens. It's amazing. It used to be always you, but right now we are also Rob's having some problems. He's getting back here. Uh, let me wait. So before that, just say thanks to Diogo that is helping us with the structure, sending super chat here. But Amazing. Again, Thank you. Valeu, Diogo. Thank you very much. Let's see if you Rob. Awesome. All right, Rob. You're Damn back. It. Internet connection. Damn it. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Rob? Yeah, we can we can hear you, but can you hear us, Rob? Mm -hmm. Boo. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna, uh, if you guys wanna send some questions here. Se você tiver uh, algumas perguntas aí, pode passar, Bruno. Beleza. Vou colocar aqui. Estão perguntando quando vai sair o disco novo, mas. Pode ser em espanhol também. Paulo Araújo, quando vai sair o disco novo? When we gonna have a new album? Uh, we don't think about a new album right now. We didn't have either, even the chance to to perform Quadra live, you know. Our new album is Quadra. Uh, Quadra came out in February. We were preparing the tour uh, for March and April with Sacred Reich and Crowbar and Art of Shock in North America. But we had to cancel and postpone everything because of the pandemic. So uh, this is our new album. We just released uh, recently a new video clip for the song Gardens of Earth, which um, Uh, we did a special here in a simple quarter talking about the video with the guys from the Amazon front lines and the Sea Shepherd. And, um, and we have planning, planning, uh, and ideas maybe, uh, in the near future to do even another video clip, you know, for, for a new song from the, the album Quadra, we have many possibilities and, um, this is something that is not out of the question. But uh, as I said, we just released Gardens of Earth that uh, it came out. And for you who didn't have the, pos the chance to see the video, please go to our website, sepultura.com.br, uh, or our YouTube as well, Sepultura. And you see the video clip there. It came out great. In my opinion, it's one of the, the best videos that we ever did. And in a situation, a quarantine situation because we were in our houses and the director, video director, Raul Machado did an, um, an amazing job putting everything together. And, uh, and we are working towards, uh, or within our limitations here, you know, but, uh, that's where we have to use your creativity, you know, to try to, to, to create and make something out of nothing basically. But, um, Another surprise that uh, that I might tell you today for you that we are working on a Sepul Quadra album. Uh, we are selecting some of the songs we did with uh, amazing friends and musicians throughout the Sepul Quarta that uh, we started in April. And we are organizing something like the Sepul Quarta album, you know, to put everything together. We're going to remix everything in a proper way and uh, do an artwork and everything specially. And uh, this is something that's going to be really cool, you know. And, uh, and uh, if you guys have any suggestions, you know, you guys are welcome also to participate, you know, because Sepul Quarta is, is, made, is made by not only the band and the the crew, Bruno and everything, but especially you guys, you know, fans that are here with us from all over the world. 
And uh, it would be great to hear suggestions, what you guys want to listen or what you guys want to see on the album and stuff. Yeah, we, we might do this together, you know? So, uh, but not new material. Of course, I'm writing all the time, you know, not only guitar heavy stuff, but also acoustic and classical things and with the classical guitar and stuff. And music is always going, uh, flowing. Also, I'm working with De La Tierra, uh, my other side project that I have, uh, uh, you know, we, we have a, a demo ready for a third album. We also supposed to record the album in, uh, in May this year, but because of all the pandemic situation, we postponed for next year and hopefully we'll be able to record the album ne next year for De La Tierra, you know? But uh, there you go, these are the, the news, but the Sepul Quarta album is, will be something very interesting that uh, I invite all of you to, to be a part of it, you know, because we are making this together and this is a, an incredible experience for all of us. And it'll be cool to, to have this uh, register in an album, uh, this unique performances, you know, that might not happen again. And if you happen, it's gonna be on stage in a whole different situation, uh, which is the situation we all love and we all working towards, you know, that situation to happen again sooner than later. But these versions are very unique, you know, and it happened in the context of the pandemia and the context of everything that we are living through these days. And um, will be very special uh, to, to make this, uh, to register this in an album, you know, so. Andreas, uh, Rob is back, but be, before that is, is, I think it's important to say that we just, uh, Sepultura just released an, uh, a single, right? Like for a cover version. Yeah, for... that too. That's a, that's a good, uh, um, remember it, it came out a few weeks ago and um, it's the version that we did for the song Tainted Love from the band. Uh, it was well known by the band Soft Cell in the 80s, but it's, it, it is an older song. Uh, and um, I, I knew I heard the song for the first time with Soft Cell uh, because it was a very popular video clip as well. And um, it is a part of uh, this Brazilian TV series that's called the Zalma, or uh, I don't know how you translate that. How you translate the Zalma? And soul, the soul, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and <no> soul. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it is taking your soul apart away for, from you, <clears> something <throat> like that. And it's a very uh, dark, you know, series TV series. And we were invited by the the global uh, TV who who produce all the series with great actors and stuff to do this version sp specifically for this uh, TV series. But uh, it's on all the, the platform, the, the, the streaming platforms and everything, uh, Tate and Love by Sepultura. And uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, to work um, on it. We did in Rio de Janeiro. Rafael Ramos was the producer, an amazing Brazilian producer who did a great job, loves heavy metal music and, uh, unfortunately, he worked uh, not so much with metal bands, but uh, he, the chemistry we had was amazing, you know, and uh, very happy with the result. So go after and take a listen. All right, Rob, you have a different background, better internet. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the garage. Yeah, uh, my... I, ha I had to do this a few times here too because my house is the same thing. You know, sometimes it's better here or there, but. Uh, Totally. I'm and glad you're back. All, of all things, thank <coughs> you. My, my kid is in school right now, too, which means he's using the Wi Fi. So oh, yeah, that, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. we're competing. I, I went into his room. I'm like, turn off your Wi Fi. Stop play, I'm playing that. video games. <laughs> like, I'm in school. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, you got to keep that on. <clears throat> okay, so that's what happened here. We, we're kind of, but I think I got a stronger stick. I moved closer to the router or whatever. No, it's yeah, great. So. Great sounds great and, and looks great. Um, and um, and 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 I caught the last part of your. I, I was glad to hear. Um, I was hoping that you guys were gonna do that with these Sepul Quarta songs. I'm like, these guys gotta be having these recordings and thinking about compiling <laughs> something with that. And I heard you ask, you know, saying suggestions. So I, I suggest Apes of God should be on, the, <laughs> on this, this album. You know, I'm um, sure it will be because it came out <laughs> so fucking great, man. I, I was so happy. You know, 
you you seem to to be a part of this band naturally. <laughs> That's you what know, I felt. It, 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 it connected so well, you know, the sound and every the, the, the way you play and and the the the, the lead part. It, it came out fun, fucking great, man. You know, so Thanks, uh, for for sure. Uh, soon you're gonna uh, receive some bureaucratic stuff. <laughs> 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 we can put you together with Sepultura, but yeah, yeah, man, this this will be very interesting because, as I said, you know, very unique versions. You know that it's not gonna happen again. Of course, it can happen on stage, touring, and everything, but that that will be something different. <clears throat> you know, this version is very unique, or all the versions that we did. You know, since we started this. So I think it's worth it really to to make it all in a, in one package, you know. So we yeah. are working towards that. We don't have any dates or anything, you know, set and stuff. But uh, this is something that uh, we're going to work uh, uh, sooner than later. You know, we're going to have more news about it, you know. Great. Great to hear it. Yeah. It's very fun to be a part of it. You know, I love me some Sepultura, so it's very easy to to get in the groove with you guys cuz that's my that's my jam that's my style man awesome. that heavy heavy groove so uh, you you were saying about the under pressure album uh, you were talking about the new song and stuff oh thank you for bringing that back i was like damn i got cut off right when i was having my little bit of shameless self promotion for our release <laughs> no please man come on <clears throat> all right well so yeah so it's four songs under pressure cover a uh, new song Faded Remains, oh, then we covered our own song, Room with a View. Um, it's a bit of a ballad from our 1990 album, Act Three. And finally, we did an acoustic version of a song, Revelation Song, which is from our latest album, Humanicide. So we kind of represented four kind of different things there in one kind of EP. And another thing of note that was really interesting is that it was. I mean, it wasn't as much to mix because we don't have the drums and bass and everything in there. But for what it's worth, it was mixed by Max Norman, who Max Norman produced our album Act Three in 1990. And even even better, Max Norman produced Diary of a Madman and Blizzard of Oz, uh, among many other great metal albums. But for me, still till this day, these you know this is the person who produced. Randy Rhodes' greatest I'm, I'm, I'm works. I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> man, just to, just to yeah, you Those know, two albums, I mean, especially Dire of a Mad Man, you know, it's like, wow, man, you know, to work with that producer, it's, it, it, that's why you, you chose him, right? The, of course. Of, that, yeah. of course. And even till this day when I'm talking to him or just we're working on this album and <clears throat> talking about stuff and even catching up on, you know, since we worked together in 1989, it's back then it's, I just, I was just like a, to me, I was like a, a little kid that knew nothing. And, and here's this guy who produced Blizzard and, and Diary. And I was just in awe of, of the whole time. And, you know, all, not to mention this guy's <clears throat> from England. So he's, he's, we're, we're recording in LA and here he is with his, english accent and and his experience and you know at this point we're so young we never worked with somebody from that comes from england with an english accent and uh you know it, it made it more it made it more of a a look andreas andreas got so bored he just he just left <laughs> no i'm kidding um see now it's my son but but he's not in school. He's fucking playing video games, which is worse. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, it's cool to work with Max again after all these years and reconnect. He's a great guy and a, uh, a great producer, a great mixer. And yeah, you know, and he he recorded my my guitar god of all time. So I just have to constantly not have to hold back from trying to ask him stuff about Randy Rhodes. <laughs> I can't imagine, man. I'll, 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 I'll only talk about that during recordings. <laughs> I, I, I must have done that back in 1989. I bet I was probably bothering the shit out of him, asking every like thing about how, how he record everything, everything. So, But uh, uh, how, how is he as a producer? Because you, you can, of course, you know, Randy Rhodes and Ozzy and stuff, but once you're there working with him, it could be a disaster, you know. That's you, true. You, you have to have a chemistry going, you know. Oh, it was so, it was a crazy experience because for us that was our first real 
studio experience like that's we that was like the learning lesson of my life doing that record because not only were we working with a world-class producer that knew things that you know we we knew how to produce and how to do pre-production and really work out the songs and everything but as well as that is that um you know we are signed to a major label at this point like we had signed to geffen records so there was this like major label experience happening with the 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 a and r guy which was tom zutat who was at the same time doing appetite for destruction guns and roses wow. and he was doing them and us and bouncing back and forth between the two of us well guess who got more attention guns and roses <laughs> 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 we were the we were the bastard thrash metal uh, attempt of of Geffen Records, like so they didn't know how to deal with thrash or anything, like. But it was yeah, still yeah. an experience for us because we got to go through all of that and working with with Max, and that that's where we learned how to really work on music, like the 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 amount of rehearsing, the amount of pre production, and we were getting pissed off. Like the, the, we weren't used to that. You know, we were used to just yeah. writing our writing our songs and recording it. Uh, however, we just wrote it. And this time we're being made to work it out, work on the arrangements, go over that again, rework that part. And we were just like, what is this? Why do we have to write 30 <laughs> songs? Like we you know, after the first 10 songs and they're like, okay, there's some pretty good stuff here. Just keep on and writing. They, and then the argument, uh, his argument was, Randy did it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they did, they did Blizzard and Diary of a Madman in in one year. Like, yeah, uh, that's like, true. Oh, yeah, shit, really. And it's like, yes, get to work. And so, <laughs> yeah, therein we learned how to work, how, how to really work, though. Like, and yeah, how yeah. how much it takes to 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 just analyze what you're doing and like pay like really so it was an incredible learning ex experience um at the time in the moment of time we were kind of back and forth but that was our problem because we were only 20 years old at that time and and we thought that you know at that time you just kind of have it in your mind like everyone's just telling you what to do like all these people are like trying to tell you what to do and all all we want to do is just rock out and like don't hear about all this bullshit like all like that everyone's like trying to direct you and so we yeah. were kind of having an anti anti vibe against it, like everything we just thought the major label was everyone was just a bunch of commercial assholes trying to tell us what to do and i remember well that feeling uh, man you know yeah oh, you yeah, think you totally. know it all yeah in your mind, yes. you're like, we know what we're about like you know we, we already this is our third album already like we've been through two records arrogant kids yeah <laughs> you know so we had that attitude so it was probably difficult to work with us a little bit because we probably weren't being too professional at the time we're probably at the studio just messing around joking around a lot and like i, re I recall meeting meetings were happening with with lawyers and with the label and like all this stuff and we were just like bored out of our mind not yeah. wanting to talk yeah. about that shit we, which actually it's a that's a whole nother story but that resulted in us having a lot of business problems after that because we didn't pay attention i can't um, imagine yeah yeah so you know as you know you in yeah time, we, did. We, we went through the lives. same thing yeah we went through the same type of thing and i remember when we signed our first contract with roadrunner was like a like a huge like was like a bible like that and yeah. then we translated to Portuguese and it was the same and we didn't understand <laughs> shit. <laughs> In Portuguese no, it was even worse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and we right. signed, you know, we signed, uh, it's like the crossroads, you know, we signed the, the deal with the devil and yeah. then you, you deal with, with the stuff and we dealt with the problems later. I mean, it, it was crazy. And in, in some type of respect, even today, you know, we deal with some stuff uh, from, from that time, you know, here and yep. there because of releases, old releases and box sets and stuff like that, you know. But, exactly. Uh, That's right. But, uh, it, it is a learning experience, you know, and, and you're only going to learn like that. I mean, there's no That's right. university, you know, there's no school, you know, every band has a different way to deal business, you yep. know, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, an illusion that you go to school and you're going to learn how Metallica does it, how Guns N' Roses does it, how U2 <laughs> does it. Everyone has a totally different method of, of dealing with business and contracts and, 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 and everything, you know. So you have to find your own because uh, this is very unique and very peculiar, you know. It's, it's not it a is. general a way of dealing with stuff, you know. Not at all, not at all. A lot of it too has to do with just pure 
luck, good luck or bad luck had us True, a lot yeah. to do with everything. You know, you just happen to connect with this person could have been the wrong person that you connected with. It led you down this road or you connect with, it's a lot, of, a lot of it has to do with the people that are around you, especially yeah. at a, at a, at a young age where, and where you don't know much about the business you're learning, you're, 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 you're naive and you, you have a, you're easily victimized and you, you because you're just, you just want to get forward. You just want to yeah. rock. You don't realize exactly. like things are going to come back to haunt you or something in that time. You don't want to hear about it. You just want to move forward and rock. But, um, and there really is no other, like you said, there's no other way to go about it. You can't, you just have to follow your, your instincts and hopefully you're advised by someone good. And, and then after that, you just got to see what happens and, yeah, and you you'll learn how to deal with people. You learn. You, you learn how to deal with false promises and, and you, you, you learn how to, to identify a guy full of bullshit, you know, and you learn, you learn day by day, you know, we're still learning. I mean, we, it, we never will know everything all the time, especially totally. in a market that is changing every day, you know. It builds character too in, in, in yourself yeah. and in your band and the things you go through because, yes, bands like us who has been through so many ups and downs and lived through this, that, and the other, you know, like they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Definitely. So you, you, you learn from that one and, you know, another lesson learned and you just put it to experience and hopefully you move forward with that in mind and, you know, you, you keep moving, move, moving forward and you need a lot of perseverance and you have yes. to have a lot of resilience in here you, you, because you get yeah. knocked, you get knocked down over and over again, but it's, you just get back up and you know exactly. that you got to do what you got to do because you love music and you just have to do what it takes to do that it. all of your life. Yeah. So once you get that together and you go through these weird waves too, I mean, I don't know if you've either, in times where things were really bad for us or, you know, certain eras of our band was, either breaking up for a minute there or going in some kind of hiatus due to one reason or another, <clears throat> you come to a point at, after so many years too, that you question, like I've gone to points where I thought maybe it was just time to try to go do, going down a different life path or something. Cause it's just not working. Like you're struggling and like things aren't happening. Nothing's, there's no money. You're like working some other job. You can't even try to like get on the road. And then you just go, well, fuck, man. Maybe I need to like grow up a little bit here, <laughs> and do something. especially when my kid was born and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, whoa, I got to yeah. keep going on tour, and you're not making that much money. So, but then, thankfully, uh, in that other world, it was soon. You know, it didn't take long until I realized that it's not gonna work that way. That music is just without music, I'm, I'm even it is what worse. It is. Yeah. I exactly. have to get back. So yeah. finally, you just surrender yourself to music and just know that that's that's it for the life for for your life. So you you need to make it work one way or the other because you just can't do without it. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, cadê a pergunta? Uh, where's that question? Uh, Dimitri Kiri Kiriuhin. Thank you for your question. As a huge Queen fan from my youth, I should say that to make a good Queen covers is a really hard work and absolute magic. That angel just did it great. Will Sepultura you. try to make a queen cover? Mm, we have no, 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 no plans and stuff, but Queen is one of my favorite bands, you know. Uh, of course, uh, Rob, you know, uh, uh, also, I, I think uh, all the metal world, the metal community, community loves Queen, you know. It's, it's something that it's part of our our root as a musician you know as a as a band and queen did so much in the early days very heavy you know like metallica covered stone cold crazy and uh, yeah. you guys did under pressure with david bowie you know there's so much that queen offered to the the music world that uh it has i think one song for any style of music out there that's that can made by queen right that's you right i mean uh a Night at the Opera is 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 a is one of my favorite albums. Actually, it was my first vinyl that I bought, um, and I still think that is one of the the great masterpieces of of music, not only in rock but in music in general. You know, and uh, only there you you have so many different styles that you have many different bands that could really uh, pick up a Queen song and do it. But uh, yeah, it, it is a big challenge. You know, that's mm. where when I start talking about under pressure, you know, because. 
I said, you guys have a lot of balls, <laughs> you know, because uh, it is it's something really, I mean, a, a big responsibility, you know. And uh, It is. It, it really and, is. For one thing, I mean, they have Freddie Mercury on vocals. So oh, right, right there, you, you, you have a challenge yeah. right here because this is a one-of-a-kind one type of expressive, like his yeah. vocals, it's the way his expression. Um, so, yeah, and of course, yeah, their musicality is, is the highest caliber their songwriting. I mean, man, you guys should just do, just get it over with and do Bohemian Rhapsody, bro. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, I mean, they're a, definitely an early influence on on the, on our album, Act Three, that Max Norman produced, which we recorded in 1989. There's a song on there, Veil of Deception, which is a acoustic acoustic song as well. And that song is absolutely inspired by Queen. That was, I was really getting into Queen at, at that era of my life, listening to so much of their variety and their acoustic stuff and different stuff. And I wanted to write a song like that, like a, a, a queen type of inspired acoustic uh, song. And that it, that was happening even way back then. So um, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Queen, queen, queen is just great, but um, yeah, you and know. I remember, uh, and I remember that uh, our first festival that we did was in Dy a Dynamo Festival in 1990. Mm -hmm. That angel was the headliners, yeah. and uh, I remember backstage, man. You know, I saw your guys' tour bus and stuff. Was the the best tour bus and stuff was was you guys were really you're saying you know major label and you have all the support and everything. Uh, what do you remember about that festival? Because for for me, we did that festival in June 1990, and then January 91, we were playing Rock in Rio for the first time. You know, oh without without the Dynamo Festival, I think Rock in Rio for us would be much more difficult. You know, to 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 face because oh yeah, the feeling and the vibe to play in a festival is so. It's so unique. It's so different, you know, and it uh, changed your life. You know, it changed yeah. mine. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, I want that, you know, forever and stuff, you know. Oh, my and, God. I remember we had we had like kind of a difficult show with technical problems and everything. But everything was so positive, you know, backstage, sacred right guys were there for beating. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you guys were headlining, you know, was was so exciting, you know. What do you remember from from that? It was so exciting. That 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 was till this day. That's one of the most um, monumental shows that we played, simply because it was so huge and we were the headliners. I mean, that was one of the biggest concerts we ever he headlined. And um, funny you, you mentioned about the technical difficulties because we had we were having them too. So I one thing I can remember very vividly is that you're so excited, like you're so pumped up. And then these technical difficulties start happening right in the beginning yeah. of the set. It was so frustrating because like it was ruining the, yes. the moment. And like, no, what's <laughs> happening? And my, my, my stuff was getting unplugged and something happened to uh, Gus, our other guitar player, like right before the show, like so his, his head got unplugged, like his amp, the, the, the speaker cables for some reason got took, it was removed and it made it blew his head the amp like his amp blew because it was unplugged and the speakers were plugged uh, in. Yeah, so we, yeah, had yeah. Like, we had to get swap amps and stuff you know was delaying our intro and then like my stuff was cutting out and funny enough i just i kind of recently saw some video footage from that somebody sent me some footage i'd never seen and it of all things in the footage it's showing me and i'm having these technical difficulties and and i'm I'm like freaking out. I'm yelling at my, my, my guitar tech, who's a good friend of mine, but I, I could see myself in the video on stage yelling at him. And he's like on the ground in front of me. He's trying to like plug in my Trying shit. I'm like, his best. <laughs> yes, I'm standing over him yelling on top of him, you know, and in time too, we've learned also not to freak out on stage. And so yes. that's another yes. thing that back in the day, you'd get really pissed off and freak out and start yelling or like telling the crowd something like, I don't know, mentioning something about what's going on. Yeah, that's and the now, worst you can do. And I mean, oh, to bring man. the crowd to the, the, the problems on stage. I mean, my God, watching myself yelling and getting pissed on that video, I, it was like, I was cringing seeing what, I, like, <laughs> no, stop, stop that. But um, other than that, it was, it was, it was amazing. I think. Things got sorted and and we we were able to you know finish yeah, the show. Yeah, like I said, we 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 enjoyed as well. I remember spe specifically on Inner Self, which was our hit. You know, we had a video clip and stuff. 
that was like exactly the song that everything went wrong, you know, so like, <laughs> the, the same but with cables and, and we didn't have a crew, a specific crew, you know, we had people oh, that helped us uh, from the local promoter because we did like a small uh, Dutch tour, you know, after the uh, show um, and it was like, um, we were just working with people that we never met before. And, you know, my English was really bad and stuff. So, we, we, we survived, you know. Like I said, it was a great experience for us because we went to Rock and Rio stage playing with Guns N' Roses and Megadeth and Queen Drake, and you know, it was, it was insane. But we were at our home, you know. We have our crew, the people there and stuff. Yes. But that that show was really um, made us uh, prepared, you know, for mm -hmm. for for the next uh, situation, you know, which was Rock and Rio, which was huge for us and. And really insane. open uh, insane doors for us too, you know. So I remember that show was really fantastic, you know. It, it was like a life changing experience for all of us, you know. It really, we it really, really fun. going to the next level, you know. Oh yeah, playing festivals is an, is definitely another beast within itself. So and talking yeah. about Rock and Rio, guys, you guys have to come to Rock and Rio, man. You know. I know. Come I mean, on, man. This is something that. Uh, uh, I don't know if next year I think they have the the, the roster closed, but uh, this is something I'm gonna work <laughs> to to make it happen, you know, because I I know the, the 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 people there and stuff, and they always ask me, you know, to to help to to make the the heavy metal day there for the especially for the sunset stage, which Slayer and Anthrax headliner last year mm -hmm. it was insane, you know, it was fantastic. And um, hopefully, you know, that will be a good opportunity for you guys to come and then do a whole tour around uh, the Rock and Rio Day. That would be amazing. And now that you have told me that you have a connection in there and you help put the metal day together, I, I, I expect that we're, we're going to be getting an invitation to, pl to play this <laughs> like, famous Rock you are, and Rio. You, you, you are on the list. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. So, um... <laughs> So uh, what what are the plans? Of course, you you guys gonna do the 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 Christmas concerts and stuff. Uh, you, you guys plan to to play the, the the new stuff from the Under Pressure album or 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 not? No, <clears throat> no, that's not really that's not planned for this Christmas show. We have a a, a, whole, a different, very unique set that we're working on right now. Um, but we're gonna. We're gonna leave the acoustic stuff out of it and keep it all the way keep it all the way heavy. It's we 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 did we did enough for the acoustic and kind of chill vibe by putting out that EP and stuff. And we really appreciate you know our fans accepting the the fact that it wasn't heavy at all. You know, some people were definitely like, "What the hell is this? Like, whoa, what is this? Where's the heaviness?" <laughs> I know, I know, man. <laughs> but you know, still. Still, we, we hold on. I pulled my headphones out. Still, we're we're aching to to to, to play heavy heaviness. I, I've been doing a, enough acoustic here at my house, yeah, and yeah, because it's yeah, the, sure. we don't have a the band and everything. So now that we got it together, but we have we definitely have a lot of uh, you know different stuff in this set. It, even though we don't do the the acoustic thing, where you know we for one thing we. There's always a tradition of us covering a, a Beatles song. So we're every year we cover a different Beatles song there because we we borrowed the idea of the another Christmas show from the Beatles because they used to do that. Um, they did like another Beatles Christmas show like every year they called it that and did that. So we we took the idea from that. So as tribute to them, we do a Beatles song. You know, that's killer. Make it heavy, do it our way. Yeah. So working that working out choosing the song and how to how to do a, our version of it and um and then we do a a different a christmas song every year so we try to choose a not a normal christmas song but yet a christmas song and make make that happen and then we do songs that we don't normally play live as much like we go into our cool. catalog bring out a couple things that we don't normally play and maybe even a song or two that we never played live before so from our from our own songs so yeah, yeah. That's, keep, that's keeping us busy. That that and the fact that we literally haven't played together for six to seven months since the last show of the of, of that last tour in Europe. So 
it's it's a lot of work we got going on. We have a, a month to get it together. We have two different sets, two two nights with two different performances, different songs in each night. Killer. So yeah, that's keeping us quite busy. As as you know, as you know, when you don't play stuff for a long time, you kind of have to re relearn your own thing again. Like true, and, yeah, true, yeah. Of course. Solos and stuff. I'm like, how do I play this thing? So <laughs> yeah, now we've been rehearsing for a for a few times. So. The rust, the rust is, is is gone there now. Now we're start we're starting to rock, so um, that that's what we got going for the rest of the year. Then then once we that happens till the, you know that's in the end of December. The shows are on December nineteenth and twentieth. Then I guess we'll just take the rest of, of the year off to celebrate the holidays and br- ring in the new year. Then we'll get back to he- heavily working on our new our new record. So we already have great some songs going and I'm, I'm definitely itching to put all of this, everything that we've gone through in this past year will be coming out in music. Of course, all, all of that emotion definitely. is to be, to be poured out into, into music. And there's, there's no shortage of uh, inspiration to dig into, to look for, for he- heavy music in here. Cause it's been nothing but a heavy time going on. No shit, man. No yeah, shit. man. So that's the the real healing music. That's, that's the real healing, and I'm just fortunate to have my my home studio, so I can just lock myself in there. And when I emerge, it's so hours later, and I just you know I'm not bored because I'm just definitely crafting away in there, and I'm I love to compose and create, and so that's pretty good for. For our and situation. you are one of the best out there, man. You know for sure. Thank Your you, my stuff brother. Is amazing, and uh, and thank you so much for being a part of this, Rob. You know, thank you for waking up earlier. <laughs> 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 you know, the time difference is brutal oh, and everything. You know. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm definitely a, la- a a nocturnal creature. So <laughs> okay. now now I can get to I can get to rehearsal early. I gotta I gotta work on my tongue right. and do some stuff anyway. So just give me, <laughs> give me a reason to not. You know, the guys in my band will be excited that I didn't come running in ten minutes late as normal. Going, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late. So. And please send my love to the guys, you know, to all of them. I miss you all. Uh, it's so good to see you guys uh, working and jamming. And uh, thank you so much, Rob. You you are a giant. Uh, now we're going to watch uh, Apes of God with your jamming, with your participation with us, which was monumental. And yeah. hopefully we can, you know, do this on stage sooner than later and stay safe and that's it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. You know, it's an honor for me to be here and it's an honor for me to jam with you guys. I, watching this video gets me so excited because it's us together. I like, yeah, you know, and it, it just makes me, it's, it's one of the, you know, we haven't been able to do anything like this for months. So I was very, I'm very excited to have been able to be a part of this and thank you all the best to you, the rest of the boys, thank Derek, you. Eloy, Paolo, Bruno. Thank you. And um, yeah, let's do it again sometime soon. Hopefully see you soon, man. Thank you very much, Rob. All right, brother. Ciao, amigo. Ciao.